but not least, we're going to come back and we have uh, Jezebel. We know how we love Jezebel. Minister-elect Ashley Martin. And then can we give God some praise in here? Come on, give God. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. Amen. Amen. All the preliminaries out the way, so I just want to pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to stand before your people, to minister your word. God, I ask you to touch me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Lord, decrease me so that you may increase. In Jesus' name, amen. So today I have the assignment to talk to you about Jezebel. And I'm going to read scriptures. And the first scripture I'm going to read is 2 Kings chapter 9, verses 30 through 36. I'll be brief. And you can turn here if you like, or you can read it another time. But it says, And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face, and tired her head, and looked out at a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window, and said, who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. Yeah. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink, and said, go, see now this cursed woman, and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, and but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. And I have one more scripture, and that will be for the scriptures. I'm coming from Revelation chapter 2. Verses 20, 20, 20 through 22. Not, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent their deeds. Amen. The Lord of the word, the Lord of the word of the Lord is blessed. If I can use for a title, it will be "Beware of the Jezebel Spirit." So today we hear Jezebel in association with women of a certain way of life, as they have harlots. Uh, they think that she's only associated with sexual immortality and promiscuity. Some people associate red lipstick or jewelry of the way a woman is dressed. Oh, look at how she's dressed like a Jezebel. Look at that. But there's so much more yes. to unpack with this bad girl. So let me give you a few words to describe her. Malicious, revengeful, cruel, crafty, vindictive, merciless, barbaric, wicked, promiscuous, and a thorn in Elijah's side. Amen. So to help you better understand who Jezebel was, we need to know of her origin. Who was she? Why was she considered to be one of the most wicked women in the Bible? Uh -huh. So let's talk about her name. Jezebel means exalted by Baal. Baal is with me. Now Baal, we know, is associated with the devil. Demons, bells above. And it's everything contrary to God. Uh -huh. And it was a God that the Canaanites and the, Phoen the Canaanite Phoenicians worshipped. This is who they called Lord. So how we call Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Baal was their Lord. And she was the daughter of King Ethel, hence the name, which made her a Phoenician Canaanite princess. Now, the Canaanites had a brutal way of ruling. They were barbaric. They sacrificed children to a god called Molech, which is another demon. And this was their way of life. So she was born and raised in a household where devil worship was accepted. This yeah. was their way of life. This was all she knew. She was taught to be adverse to God. 
And I just want to encourage you real quick. You don't have to be a product of your environment. There are so many people who have been raised and brought up in bad households, but they came out to be something great and something great. So be encouraged with that. Amen. So aside from worshiping the devil and demons, she worshiped idols. And we can consider in this time idols to be anything adverse to God that you value more than God. Anything that you value more than God. It could be a car, it could be money, it could be a job, it could even be people. And sometimes it could be your children. Beware. Amen. So Jezebel ultimately became the first great instigator of persecution against the saints of God. And ultimately, she had one of the most dramatic deaths. And we'll talk about that a little later. So now let's move on to Ahab. Now, Jezebel marries Ahab. Ahab, I just got to give you a little bit of history on who he was. He was a king, and he was considered to be an ungodly, godlike man. So, and he was an Israelite that failed to live by the law. So he was considered to be worse than all the kings previous to him. And we know about the Israelites, they were a chosen people. He angered and he provoked the Lord. And he participated in evil doing as well. So after they married, Jezebel persuades him to introduce the worship of Baal to the people. Now, y'all married women. I'm not married, but you know when you want something, you know how to look, you know what to smell like, you know what to cook, you know what to say, you know how to put that voice on like, hey, um, um, I want that coach back. <laughs> so she had her way of getting what she wanted. Beware of the Jezebel spirit. Now, the dynamic between the two, he was the king, but she was the influence behind the throne. I remember my grandmother using the reference, and this is not saying that my grandmother has anything to do with evil, but she would say, well, Jamie is the head, but I'm the neck, and the neck turned the head anywhere you want to go. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Made a good point right there. <laughs> I love you, Ma. <laughs> so she had her way of getting her way. She was the one who made all the decisions. Now, Jezebel was ruthless, and she had a passion for worshiping the devil, the heathen worship. And anyone who opposed her, she wanted to destroy them. The Bible speaks about how she had 450 prophets who ministered under the worship of Baal, under her care, except one prophet. Prophet Elijah. Yes, Lord. And this was one of Israel's greatest prophets. Oh, yes, it was. And she really wanted to get rid of him. But I'm going to tell you something. When God has his hand on you, yeah. Amen. when he has called you for a purpose, there's no devil in hell, no person that can stop what he's going to do. I encourage you by Elijah today. But that's another time for another day. we talking about this bad girl in the Bible. Amen. So now, I want to give you an incident that shows her actions of her being controlling and ruthless. The story of Nathan in the, in the vineyard. This is 1 Kings chapter 21. It's a long story. I don't want to read that, but you can read it on your own time. Next to their home, there was a vineyard that belonged to Nathan. Ahab desired this garden and wanted to purchase it, and he wanted to make it a vegetable garden. Long story short, Nathan declined this offer because it was inherited. It was against what he believed in. He didn't want to give it up. So Ahab went home and sulked, and he did not eat, as the Bible says. So Jezebel comes in, and she's like, why are you so sulking? Is this how you act as the king of Israel? Get up. Go eat. I got this. This is Jezebel. So now Jezebel goes, and she writes letters in the name of Ahab, saying how Naboth cursed God and the king and commanded them to be stoned, commanded him to be stoned to death. She sent these letters to the elders who lived in the same city. So ultimately this came to pass by her instruction. Once word got back to Jezebel, she tells Ahab, get up and go get your vineyard because Naboth is dead. Beware of the Jezebel spirit. Amen. Now my final point to talk about her ultimate demise. As the time passes, Ahab perishes in war. Jezebel reigns for another 10 years. Elisha, who was appointed to, to continue Elijah's mission yes. of getting rid of Baal worship, sent a young prophet to anoint another king, and that's King Jehu. Oh, yes. 
So under God's command, he is instructed to destroy Ahab's house, which was prophesied previously by Elijah. And that's in the story. When God says he's going to do something, Amen. and when there's a prophecy, it could be 10 years, 20 years, it could be the next day, you better believe that it's going to come to pass. It's going to do it. Amen. 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 So now, Jehu, as the new king, he goes to Ahab's house to do as he was appointed. Jezebel looks out the window, her face is painted, she's dressed, it says she tied her hair, and she mocks him, she taunts him. Have you come in peace to murder your master? So Jehu says, he looks up and he says, who is on my side talking to the eunuchs? And he says, who? So they look down, and he commanded them to throw her down. And when they did, when he did, when they did that, the blood splattered, as the, the scripture said, on the wall of the horses, and they trampled on her, trampled over her, excuse me. And I stated earlier, this was one of the most dramatic and gruesome deaths in the Bible. The wrath of God is something different. So Jehu went, he went and ate, and he said, the king's daughter, you know, let's give her a proper burial. So by the time that he got there, or the, the people to bury her, her she was devoured by the, the dogs, and they eaten most of her body. So in my conclusion, just to let you know about this bad girl, Jezebel refused to repent. And even though she is dead, that demon still lingers today. The spirit of Jezebel is not just a lust thing. Its influence is to design to alter your view of yourself. Right. Have you thinking that you are not who God called you to that's be? Right. And that's what we've seen in Ahab. It is the drive to do things adverse to God, the way of the enemy. Resorting to the opposing side does not necessarily mean full satanic worship, but if you're not serving God, then who are you serving? That's right. Amen. Amen. And this spirit is not only in female form. You don't just see it in females. It's not about what she looks like or her being promiscuous. It could be in men as well. And also what I learned is it can mimic spiritual gifts. You have to be aware. You got to be right. aware of who you're listening to, who you're connected to, because everybody ain't right. Right. It's narcissistic. It has right. no regard for God. It has no fear of destruction. Beware of the Jezebel spirit. Amen. Can we stand on our feet and praise God? Amen. For these women of God that came through. My God. My God. When you think about what could, what could still be lingering in the earth. Amen. Jezebel's spirit is still lingering oh, in the yeah. earth. Yeah. And I heard someone say, whatever you obtain outside of the will of God, you have to stay outside of the will of God to maintain it. Yeah. So when you realize that God is the one that's moving and directing your life and keeping you from day to day, that's when you realize, for God I live and for God I will die. Beware of the Jezebel spirit. Beware of the internet that in influences you and make you do things and make you think that that's the right way to be. Everybody's influencing everybody. And I will be the first one to tell you that if you are not the influencer, you are being influenced. Amen. Glory to God. So we thank God. We thank God. Amen. For uh, all of the women of God that came through, they talked about uh, they talk about Eve, they talk about Rahab, they talk about Jezebel. There is something that we have to gain from the Word of God. Sometimes we read the Word of God and don't realize everything is a lesson. Everything is a message to our spiritual man. Because whatever you feed the most, that's what will grow the biggest. So if you're feeding your spirit the Word of God, the, the presence of God, it's going to grow and become big. But if you just him who and, and it's shucking and jiving like my daddy used to say. And you don't really look to God. You don't read your word. You don't pray. You don't come and get into the spirit of the Lord. Then it will be very, the spiritual man is, is suffering. It's malnutrition. And that's not the preacher's fault. Glory to God. That's your fault. Because you refuse to feed your spiritual man. That's why they say, I'm saying, you're not saved just to be saved. You're saved and then it leads to sanctification. What is sanctification? Turning away from the world, setting myself apart so that God can use me. And when I get sanctified, the next coming up is the Holy Ghost. You can't live in this world without the Holy Ghost. 
give God any old kind of thing and render unto him any old kind of sorry worship. But the day has come. The Bible says that God seeketh such that we'll worship him and worship him in spirit and in truth. Clap your hands in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I refuse to let the devil think that he can get that off on me. I refuse to let him think that he can say my mind and change my mind. It's only because of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank God for you preachers. I thank God for you being obedient. Amen. Everybody think it's easy to preach till you have to. Wow. Amen. Right. Huh? You right. listen to the preacher. Oh, I could have right. did better than that. I could have pulled something out better than that. Oh, I could. Until you stand at the sacred table. Until you act to yourself, you ain't used to do it. Amen. So we applaud them. We thank God for their courage and for their obedience. Amen. Uh, Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. I don't want to keep you longer than I have to. Amen.